This is a demonstration of medical patient assessment. For the purpose of this demonstration, our patient will have a chief complaint of cardiac nature. I arrive at the scene, survey the scene, and determine that the scene is safe at this time. I'm going to take body substance isolations and determine that I need no additional resources. My patient has a chief complaint of chest pain, so I'm going to say the nature of illness is cardiac. Sir, do you have any neck or back pain? No. Determining that the patient has no neck or back pain, I take no C-spine precautions. I'm going to move on to my primary assessment now. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a general impression. I have a 65-year-old male found seated at home. He appears to be holding his chest uh, with obvious respiratory distress. He appears pale and a little diaphoretic. So I'm going to assume he's potentially unstable. I'm going to assess his mental status now. Sir, how are you? My name is Siobhan. Could you tell me your name? Yeah, it's Jeremy. Jeremy, can you tell me where we are, please? At home. At home, and excellent. Can you tell me what day of the week it is? Wednesday. And why did you call the ambulance? My chest is killing me. Your chest is killing you. Okay. So he's A and O times four with a chief complaint of chest pain. I'm going to move on to airway. Because he's speaking to me, I can assume that his airway is patent. But I'm going to examine the airway to determine if there's any swelling or deformity in the airway. Can you open your mouth for me so I can have a look? Thank you. The airway appears to be clear, so I'm going to move on to my breathing step. I see that he has some obvious respiratory distress and appears to have uh, labored breathing, so I'm going to take some lung sounds. I'm going to do them in the mid-auxiliary region, on right and left side. Take a breath for me, Jeremy. Excellent. And another breath for me. Okay. Once I've assessed his breath sounds and determined that there's no injury to the chest, I'm going to put him on oxygen. For this patient, I'm going to put him on a non-rebreather at 15 liters per minute. Moving on to circulation. I'm going to assess the radial pulses. His pulses are rapid and regular, a little bit weak. I'm going to assess uh, his skin. His skin is cool, pale, and diaphoretic. And I'm going to ask him, sir, are you bleeding anywhere? No. Once I've determined there's no bleeding, I'm ready to make a decision on a priority and I'm going to make this patient a high priority patient. Because I'm concerned that his chest pain is cardiac, I'm going to call for ALS. Now I'm going to move on to vital signs. Vital signs are going to start with pulse. I'm going to assess his pulse for rate, rhythm and quality. I'm going to do it for 30 seconds and multiply it by 2. If the pulse is irregular, I'm going to take it for a full minute. This patient's pulse is 120 beats per minute, regular and weak. Now I'm going to assess for respirations. I'm going to place my hand with the patient on his chest and feel for rise and fall. I'm going to do this for 30 seconds and multiply it by 2. If you're regular, I'm going to take it for a full minute. This patient's respiratory rate is 24, labored and regular. Once I've assessed the respiratory rate, I'm going to take a full set of lung sounds. I'm going to take two sets in the anterior, upper and lower, and two sets in the posterior, upper and lower. Jeremy, take a breath for me. And again, and again, and again, lovely, lovely, and again, I've taken the lung sounds and now I'm going to take his blood pressure. We're going to take it by auscultation, that way we're able to obtain a systolic and diastolic number. Our patient's blood pressure is 180 over 100. I'm going to assess his pupils. Sir, can you look at me? I would have a pen light and assess. Pupils are pearl. And then I would assess the skin again. In this case, the skin is still cool, pale, and diaphoretic. We're now going to move on to the history of the present illness. Jeremy, can you tell me where exactly your pain is? Right here. And can you tell me what you were doing when the pain started? I was watching TV. 
You're watching TV. Does anything make the pain better or worse? No. No. Can you describe the pain to me? It feels like pressure. Pressure. And does it radiate anywhere? It's moving to my left arm. I see. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst pain and 0 being no pain, can you give me a number? It's 8. 8. Okay. And what have you done to try and relieve your pain? I took a nitroglycerin. You did. And yeah. how long ago did you do that? About 10 minutes ago. Did it give you some relief? Not really. Not really. Okay. And how long exactly have you had this pain? About 45 minutes. Okay. And over the course of the 45 minutes, has the pain been consistent or has it gotten worse or better? No, it's been getting worse. It's been getting worse. Okay. I'm now going to assess for past medical history. Jeremy, besides the chest pain and the difficulty breathing, do you have any other problems you can tell me about? A little nauseous. And have you felt nauseous the whole time? Yeah. Okay. Are you allergic to anything? No. No. Do you take any medications? Yeah, I have a whole bunch. What medications do you take? Aspirin, metoprolol, sinopril, Plavix, Lasix, and nitroglycerin. Okay. Wow. So you must have high blood pressure. Yeah. In addition to the high blood pressure, what other medical problems do you have? I had a heart attack a year ago. They put in two stents. At the same time as your heart attack? Yeah. Have you had any similar incidents since then? No. And how does this compare to it's that event? It's the same. It's a similar event. Okay. Jeremy, when was the last time you ate or drank anything? A couple hours ago. And what did you have? A uh, hamburger and some water. Okay. So Jeremy, 45 minutes ago you started to have chest pain. And it's progressed up to 8 out of 10. Okay. Some respiratory distress and some nausea. And you took one nitro, but you said it didn't give you any relief. Okay, I have one last question. Sure. Jeremy, do you use any recre recreational drugs or do you drink alcohol? Not regularly. No. no. Are you a smoker? No. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to move on to our focused physical exam. Because the chief complaint is cardiac in nature, we're going to assess the patient for edema in the extremities and the abdomen. We're going to reassess the lungs and we're going to examine that shortness of breath. So I'm looking at the legs for any edema, the hands, the abdomen. I'm going to reassess the lung sounds. Again, two upper and lower in the anterior. And two in the posterior. Now we're going to treat the patient. In accordance with New York State Protocol, we're going to administer aspirin, 324 milligrams PO. We're going to determine that he has no allergies to the medication and no history of GI bleed. We're also going to assist him in the administration of his nitroglycerin. With protocol, he can have one every five minutes for a total of three. He has taken one himself, so we are allowed to administer two. As long as he continues to have chest pain, his systolic blood pressure remains above 120, and he has not used any erectile dysfunction drugs in the last 72 hours. Now we're going to transport our patient to the hospital and reassess as we go. We're going to repeat our reassessment every five minutes because the patient is unstable. This will include repeating the primary assessment, which is our ABCs and mental status. We're going to repeat our vital signs. We're going to reinvestigate our chief complaint and the patient's pain level and adjust our interventions as necessary.